Say what you want about Amazon's Wheel of Time television adaptation, it has for sure provoked reactions, both positive and negative, from current fans, while engaging many non-book readers at the same time. After episode 4 of season 1 dropped the other day, there was a ton of hype on social media concerning the episode. Nynaeve was actually trending at one point in the top 10 on Twitter. Sometimes hype just feeds itself and there isn't any real substance behind it. Sometimes the hype is the real deal. What is episode 4? Join me today as we answer that very question in my spoiler-filled episode 4 review of Amazon's Wheel of Time TV show. Now before getting into the review, make sure to subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more videos. I'm going to be trying to get out 4 to 5 videos a week while the show is running, and once it's over, I'll be back to my Wheel of Time lore-related videos. Make sure you don't miss any of it and subscribe to the channel. Just click that little button. Let's also hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, but only with spoilers through episode 4 of the TV show. There will be no book spoilers at all, so as long as you've watched the first 4 episodes of season 1, of the Wheel of Time, you should be good to watch this video. So episode 4 is a strange one in my opinion. This episode is the absolute furthest from the source material in terms of plot of any of the 4 episodes to this point. Very little of what happens in this episode actually happened in the books, at least not in the same ways. Now the other episodes at least have scenes which happened in the books. This one is almost entirely fabricated. Yet, fans of the books have loved this episode in an overwhelming margin online, and most non-book readers have engaged with it really well as well. So let me break down what I loved, what I didn't, and then give you my final verdict on this episode and a total score. We'll kick things off with what I loved, which was a lot of things. Let's start with the opening scene. Loghain was portrayed so well by Alvaro Morte, he wasn't evil, in fact, he comes across sort of as a charismatic leader. He genuinely believes himself to be the Dragon Reborn at the beginning of this episode. I loved the way they showed the corruption of the One Power and his madness. I'm never going to not be able to call that taint, so, but hey, it's corruption here. I was hoping Loghain wouldn't be shown as evil or overly good. But, and I think they were successful here. Alvaro Morte is great as always, and that accent is sexy AF. But Alvaro Morte's strong performance is actually a running theme that I think pretty much shows up everywhere in this episode. The casting and the performances have been absolutely spot on. Like, almost all of them. I noticed as I was making a list of what I liked from the episode that almost every performance came up. Kate Fleetwood is awesome as Leandrin. You actually kind of like her, and there were a lot of Easter eggs going on with her character that I'll make sure to point out in my breakdown videos when I can get around to talking about spoilers, but she was outstanding. Priyanka Bose brings awesome sarcasm and fun to the character of Alana. It's another character that I really, I could not help but like, and that performance was a big part of that. Maria Doyle Kennedy as Isla stole the show, in my opinion. I was curious why they cast her in a role that is kind of a small role in the books. She is such a good actress and she's so high profile, it just seemed like an odd casting there, but I see it now. That speech about the way of the leaf and her daughter and holding her daughter as she died, was awesome. And the Tinkers as a people are, are so well fleshed out because of her, primarily, and her conversations with Perrin. Aram was great too, but Isla was outstanding. But I think the star of the episode was Zoe Robbins as Nynaeve. She has amazing chemistry with Daniel Henney as Lan, and I'll say for all the criticism you can typically say that books are better than the movies or the TV show, this is one instance here where the show is doing something far, far better than the books. The interactions between Lan and Nynaeve have been awesome. They have a natural chemistry on screen, and I think that comes through in real life as well. When I met them, they were both awesome and click together very well. We'll talk more about her big moment here in a moment though. In general, this episode, there really wasn't a weak plot line. Like episode three had one amazing plot line and then two just okay plot lines. I'd say they were all pretty decent with good development. Even if the Perrin and Egwene plot line is a little bit talky and a little less action, I'm sure that will come there. I was a huge fan of the way that they handled whatever is going on with Matt and the interactions between Tom and Rand concerning Matt. I would have liked to have hear a bit more emotion from Tom as he told the story of Owen, um, just to get all up in the feels, but uh, it was still very, very well done. I love what they are building to with Matt as well. I'm gonna try and again, stay away from spoilers. The fight with the Fade was awesome. Uh, I wish we got more of it. And there is more going on in this than I can talk about in a 
uh, episode without book spoilers. So I'll be breaking down that entire scene in my episode breakdown videos. What I did love about it though was the unnatural movements of the Fade and how scary the situation was. The, the Fade just kind of pops out of the dark. I also love that they're sort of setting up like who killed those people. Um, I just thought that was very cool. But let's talk about the ending. The explosion of weaves that came from Nynaeve was awesome, and it's a great nod to the character from the books. I'm glad that they are doing Nynaeve's character so well, as she's she's my favorite character. And as powerful as that ending was, uh, to me, the best parts of the episode were the dialogue between the characters. I loved the scenes with Lan and Nynaeve. I loved the moments with Leandrin talking to the other Aes Sedai, or... Nynaeve. I love Nynaeve hanging out with the warders. I love the subtle exposition that didn't feel like exposition in the episode. A good example is where Moraine and Alana are talking. Moraine says something to the effect of you'd make a great blue and Alana replies I could never just have one warder or something like that. Again that sentence communicates a lot in a not in your face way. I love that we now know that blues can only have one warder typically and greens can have more. They never had to use clunky exposition to communicate that. So I thought that was awesome. To me, the reason that this episode seemed to be so well received despite being the most different from the books had less to do with the spectacle and more to do with the fact that these character moments and dialogue for me at least, we're making the characters feel exactly like they are in the books, and that's the reason that I fell in love with the series in the first place. It's not to say that there aren't flaws in the episode, and I do have some criticisms for sure that I want to talk about, but overall, this episode just felt like Wheel of Time, despite not being from the Wheel of Time. It's very odd, but it was done so well. But before getting to any of the criticisms, I want to mention the video sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a subscription box service that sends out designer items at hugely discounted prices every month. You pay one low monthly subscription fee and you get a box of stuff every single month. But how do you know you're gonna get what you like? Well, that's easy. When you sign up, they do a few assessments with you to determine what types of things you like and what types of items you would want. Then they tell you what you're gonna be getting each month ahead of time. And if you don't like what they're gonna send you, you can replace the box with any of their other tons of boxes, or you can have one not sent that month and wait for the next month to see if they have something better for you, and you won't be charged. I love the service. It's pretty awesome. This month, I got the Dulce box, which is a gourmet hot chocolate set. It includes ceramic mugs, a ceramic jar to make the hot chocolate in, and a special set of tools that they use to make a form of a South American hot chocolate, which is absolutely amazing. Bespoke Posts makes great Christmas presents for yourself or for somebody else. Absolutely check it out. Click the link in the description of the video to get signed up. You help the channel out by doing so, and honestly, they are great gifts. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. So let's talk about some things that I did not love. In this episode, there really weren't very many, and they border on nitpicking, kinda. I thought that the fight with the Fade felt a bit rushed, in the sense that Tom tells the boys to run, then they're gone. And we don't have any clues to how the fight went. And I'm not gonna get into book spoilers, but it just felt a little too abrupt for me, that's all. My largest criticisms have almost nothing to do with writing and entirely uh, are explained by budgetary constraints. As much money was spent to bring this to life, there's still a budget, and this is a very CGI heavy show. And I think the CGI effects have been all right. They're not remotely bad, they're not terrible, they're not even anything bordering on those things. But I also would not say that they've been amazing. They've been decent. And because of that, I thought the attack on the camp felt a little underwhelming maybe in the sense of what they were going for because they clearly used practical effects for the explosions and the people flying around were on wires. I do think this could have been touched up with a little bit more CGI to make the explosions look a, a little bit less like small explosive planted in the ground. Again, I'm really just nitpicking here because I doubt everybody sees this stuff the way I do. And honestly, the effects were fine. I'm just aiming for amazing and I don't think we quite got that. And the budgetary constraints also add to my other criticisms from the last episode as well. The world still feels too small to me. They are still hanging out in the woods, they're not in towns, they're not in cities, and because of this, it feels like the characters are literally running around in the woods, not too far from each other, and I think it makes the series feel smaller in scope than it probably should. Another example of this would be the small size of the force attacking the Aes Sedai camp, and the complete lack of any tower guard with the Aes Sedai. As I mentioned in my criticisms from the last week, it felt like there wasn't a large enough entourage escorting Loghain. I felt that, that even more in this episode. It's honestly not very feasible for them to hire 500 extras, costume them all, and then make them out to be the tower guard. It's easily explained why it couldn't happen, but it also doesn't make it feel any less impactful like there should have been tower guard. That's always gonna be the struggle, I think, with adapting a series of this scale. And I'm hoping as the, the series continues, 
they'll up that budget more so things like that can happen. But like I said, my criticisms were small, and overall, this was an amazing episode, and in my opinion, the best one of them yet. The world building was good, the dialogue was great, and we got to see Nynaeve be a badass. For me to score this episode, I take it all into account. I don't think it was maybe as perfect as some people thought, but it was a damn good episode of television, and almost everyone I've spoken to loved it. My score for the episode is going to be an 8.5, primarily because I think it can still get better. But I do think it was still the best episode yet. I could maybe be convinced to go to a 9, but I like the chance to keep improving, and I feel like 8.5 is a solid score for this show. What did you think of The Dragon Reborn? What would your score be? Let me know in the comments of the video. Also, make sure to like the video if you liked it, and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content, of which there is a lot more coming. I'm going to go back and do my full spoiler episode breakdown videos uh, for those of you missing the eggplant meter. Uh, it is coming, so stay tuned for those. Check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel, and make sure to also check out my Discord server if you want to have more conversation and chat with other nerds about the Wheel of Time. It's super easy, just click the link in the description of the video, it automatically adds you, or it'll help you download the app if you don't have it. Anyways, everybody, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace out. Thank <laughs> you.